A private security guard attacked while on the job. The 72-year-old caught several men trying to break into a home and recorded them with his phone. But as KTVU crime reporter Henry Lee explains, those men turned their attention to him. They all came, rushed at me, and fighting me like angry lion. Alex this story brings up the question, just how safe is it to be a security guard in 2023? Because you are watching this video, it's probably safe to assume that you are either already an officer or are considering becoming one. Don't let this story get you discouraged. In just a minute or two, I will be giving my input as to how this incident could have been avoided and maybe a strategy or two for minimizing your risk at your post. This video is brought to you by the securityofficernetwork.com, the professional security officer's status symbol of choice. So how safe is the security industry? Is it more dangerous than other occupations or even police work? We can get some answers from data published by the United States Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics. Let's take a look at their special security guard safety report entitled On Guard Against Workplace Hazards. Here's some good news. According to their report, non-fatal workplace injuries and illnesses requiring time away from work occurred at roughly the same rate for security guards as for all other occupations. In 2020, government officials estimated that security officers had incurred 6,700 of these injuries. Keep in mind that this is out of 1 million working security guards, as estimated by the department's overall data collection. So at a macro scale, while on post, your chances of suffering an injury that requires time away from work seems to be just over one half of 1% in any given year. It's not all good news. The report also has a finding on the number of fatalities while on a security guard job. It states, the rate of fatal workplace injuries to security guards was more than twice that of workers in general. Security guard fatal injuries were often the result of assaults. Approximately 60 to 80 security guards suffer fatal injuries each year while on the job. It's important to note that in recent years, the security officer fatality rate appears to have remained stable and hasn't, as of yet, experienced the massive spike that's taking place with law enforcement fatalities. According to National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund data, that number increased to a record 472 police officers. When considering that there are just 665,000 police officers in the United States, we can see that police work is getting much, much more dangerous. But as of yet, security work doesn't appear to be. So why are security officer fatalities double the national rate for all workers, while injuries on the job are some of those that are the same as the other occupations. I believe this can be most attributed to the types of post assignments. According to the security guard safety report, the perpetrator involved in fatal assaults to security guards was typically a customer, client, or individual intent on robbing an establishment. During a span of six years studied by the report, 93% of security guard homicides were committed by someone in these groups. Also, it states that security safety incidents among security guards frequently occurred in the evening and overnight. However, notably, the Bureau's fact sheet about security guards states that just 38% of security officers work in an environment that requires interaction with crowds. This indicates that many security posts are soft posts, where the officer isn't required to interact with the public and isn't likely to suffer assault. In fact, these posts are so easygoing that in many cases they are likely safer than many other occupations. While there are many of these easy, very safe assignments, a smaller number of posts sport a significantly increased risk profile. 
Examples include many of the arm sites and patrol routes where the officer frequently interacts with the public in sketchy environments, bar assignments, and restaurants and convenience stores in the high crime neighborhoods, many of which can be especially dangerous in the mid to late overnight hours. Once you understand these facts, even if you are risk adverse, then you should have a pretty strong comfort level going into security. It's a tight labor market, a fact that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon for a variety of factors. So your security employer, desperate to fill shifts, will likely, according to your expressed preferences, assign you to a post with a small risk profile if asked to do so. Let's assume that you have been assigned to a post with a high risk profile or perhaps something has gone wrong at your low risk post and it has suddenly become interesting. How can you put the odds into your favor? First and foremost, of course, be prepared. Plan and envision for every possible incident and how you will respond. Stay informed about what is going on at other sites. For example, follow Officer HQ on Twitter to keep up with incidents such as the story that led off this video. This allows you to envision how you will react when a similar incident takes place at your post. Then prepare and train. Become skilled at tactical communications. This is the art of diffusing a potential situation through communicating. There's an entire course on this that's available to members of the Security Officer Network. The true security professional will keep his ego checked and will not allow it to make him become emotionally involved in a situation, a big mistake that in my view dramatically increases risk of assault. Like so much else in life, effective security work is about allowing your experiences and knowledge to guide your use of strategic empathy, getting into the mind of your counterparty and working out a solution that prevents a situation from developing in the first place. Master this skill and you will dramatically increase your odds of being able to avoid injury or even worse. So returning to the case of the injured security guard, what would have allowed him to lower his risk profile while still carrying out his job responsibilities? As best we can tell from the news coverage, the officer provided mobile patrol services to a vacant house. Upon approaching the house, he noted the presence of three individuals who were stealing from the property. The senior citizen officer was clearly not well positioned to detain the subjects, and he did the next best thing. He recorded them with his phone. This enraged the subjects, who proceeded to assault him presumably for the purpose of taking his phone and destroying the video. Were I that officer's supervisor, I would be very impressed by his dedication to his job. He probably could have turned around and fled the scene. However, I would certainly instantly recognize that another solution would have been needed for allowing my officer to record the incident without putting such a target on him. I think I would invest in the ever more affordable body camera technology that's become affordable for even the basic frontline unarmed security officer. This technology allows the officer to record events in a way that's not as obvious to the subjects. It also keeps the officer's hands free for the purposes of self-defense. And even if he does flee the scene, those few seconds of footage could be valuable in holding the subjects accountable. This is just one example of how smart planning and learning from incidents like this can allow a security employer to reduce his officer's risk, even at the post with a high risk profile. Perhaps your agency doesn't provide you with needed technology. In many cases, you should consider paying for it yourself. It could very well be worth it and it's getting more and more affordable. So, to answer the question, is it safe to be a security officer? The answer is, most likely, yes. Yes for now, if you use good judgment and know what you're getting into. 
But before we go, here is one more thing for you to consider as you look towards the long term. If security becomes forced to fill in for more of the roles that are being abdicated due to the retreat of policing, we should expect that security injury numbers are likely to rise. Take a look at this story from Seattle. As you can see, there's going to be a tremendous and growing demand for security. This will continue to place security officers into potentially challenging situations. But it is also a great opportunity for future security professionals to find clients and make good money in this industry. If this is you and you desire a career as a security professional, consider getting your copy of How to Start a Security Agency and joining us at the securityofficernetwork.com, the home of the true security professional. That's it for now. Like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Good luck trying to find a shrink in this town.